Well, hello and welcome to On the Patio with Mr. D. And today we are on a patio, but that patio is in Celebration, uh, Florida. Now, what we're going to do today, uh, we, we're going to do another Learn Together video. And the product I'm learning today is the Insta360 Go 3S. Uh, I had the Go 2 before, and it's a kind of a fun camera, and that's basically what it's for, is for fun. And well, anyway, we, I got a bird over here who's driving me crazy. Hey, hey, he's messing up my audio. Anyway, uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be doing a Learn Together video of the Insta360 Go 3S. Now, like I said, I had the Go 2 before. And the thing I liked about the Go 2 is it's small and it's compact, but it had a lot of deficiencies too. One, uh, I couldn't execute it from my watch, uh, which I can with the S3. I can uh, program it in where my watch can act as a remote control, and that is my Apple Watch. Uh, also, this thing shoots 4K now, where the Go 2 was restricted to 1080p. Now the Go 3 came out, but it was only 2.7K, so I passed on it. So the next thing uh, I was looking at was, as soon as they come out with a 4K unit, and, and everybody knows that I really, really like Insta360 products. On this side over here, I'm running the Ace Pro. And I wanna run a parallel, uh, not a parallel, but a comparison video on video quality uh, with this particular unit. So anyway, the, the Ace Pro is running over here, and the audio is coming from the Ace Pro, and it's also coming from the 3S, and I'll be separating those two, and it's kind of an unfair advantage because I've got the mic, DJI mic system attached to my uh, shirt, and it's hooked into the uh, Ace Pro. So anyway, we're going to do this this morning. Uh, we're going to check this out. Again, we are at Celebration. Uh, we're going to do a walkabout. I'm going to do some tests and see how this thing handles itself. One of my biggest concerns is image stabilization. Now, I did set the image stabilization to high, and that should help me in the walking. Uh, I didn't. I had it set at standard as a test shoot yesterday, and, man, I could see that going all over the place. Now, it does have a leveling system in here that you can hit in the back of your setup and do your settings and set that up. But we'll talk about that later on. So, hey, we'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, so what we're going to do right now is I want to uh, show you a process to where you can set up a remote on your Apple Watch. And this is really, really simple to do. Now, I watch this on a couple of YouTube videos, and I hate those videos that they just play music and then they show you how to do something because it doesn't explain how to do it. And for those of you that don't know how to do it, uh, it's crazy. So basically on this one here, it's real simple. Go to the Apple Store icon and select it right like that. Then the next thing you do once it comes up and you have the Apple Store is hit the search icon, which is right there. Hit the search. Now on the search icon, it has the microphone down there and I suggest strongly that you use the uh, microphone icon instead of trying to type it in, but hit the mic. Insta360 and hit search at the top. And then it'll give you the options. You'll see the round with the gold circle on it. That's the one you want, okay? Now, once you have that, guys, you're gonna pair it. You're gonna pair it to this unit right here. Now it's real simple. So to pair this guys, you will hit your uh, Insta360 app. It'll ask you, connect Go 3S. It'll ask you for the camera first. You tell it's the Go 3 or the Go 3S. Once that's done, uh, then you go ahead and pair it. And it is connected, I think. Reconnect, okay. Now I hit the reconnect on this uh, because I've already paired this once. Now you'll get a blue ball as you can see here. Now what that'll do, you hit that and we are now recording. 
All right, now I'm checking for image stabilization. Sorry for the background noise. This guy's got a blower pack on his back and he's playing with it instead of using it. So anyway, uh, we're kind of getting away from that now and my audio should be coming out better. Now this is strictly audio off the Go 3S. Now again, I'm using the hat mount is what I wanted to use for this test. And I'm real curious to see the image stabilization on this thing. Uh, real curious. Now, I don't know if I can set settings in the app. I'm gonna look at that real quick as soon as I get around the bridge here. Now it does have a tilt fix guys and I just turned that on. I'm looking at all the settings that are in this camera and there's there's a lot. There's a lot to learn in this thing. Check. I think it's going to be really cool to play with. Now again, I said I had it on the hat cam. I'm going to take it off the hat cam and put it on the chest cam here in a minute. Now one thing you got to understand, if you go vertical with this camera, it's going to shoot vertical. If you're shooting up and down on this thing uh, and you have the camera set up like that, it's going to shoot vertical. You set it up like that, it's shooting 16 by 9 horizontal. So <clears throat> that's what you can do on that one. Now I'm going to do is pop this out and kick it down to the, out of the hat, now onto the chest mount. And there it is there. I want to see what the movement is. Again, I have tilt and stabilization and all that kind of stuff is on. Now this comes with also a screw on lens protector. It was funny. They said, what's in the box, a lens protector? the mount and all that kind of stuff. And I want to talk about a special mount that I put on this one today. Uh, that is a must have, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically uh, I was looking through the box and I couldn't find the lens protector. And I said, man, and then I looked at the camera and the lens protector was already installed. <laughs> that's funny, but that's how you learn. Uh, so anyway, we're just kicking it now and seeing what happened. And it was funny, yesterday I was out uh, doing a shoot with this thing, and for some reason, all the captured film when I was in studio, and it's my fault, I was doing the, uh, the cue, and when I hit the cue, I thought I had all clips, and I only had one. So that kind of ruined that entire shoot. But that happens, all right? So I've learned now, and this thing's got a uh, file transfer thing. Now, another thing that's coming, and is the quick reader now i can't wait for that should be shipping today the quick reader from uh insta 360. now what that does for me is allows me to put a 128 gig card in there and then download automatically from the internal storage on the camera onto the quick reader and that, but the only thing is, you got to understand, once it downloads, it wipes off everything that's on. It's like reformatting the uh, the internal storage. So you got to be really cognizant of what's going on. All we're doing today, guys, is just basically testing out the different functionalities. Now, I did do a time lapse yesterday, and I was able to save that one. So that'll be in this footage. So basically, it's just, will this thing perform like I want it to perform? Now, one of the big things I want to do, and I want to get the uh, the strap mount that I can hook to a selfie stick by itself, and that's for the underwater stuff. Now, I'll be doing that test in the pool, but I want to have it for when we're, Terry and I are out kayaking and in a manatee area. Now, I did that with the GoTo, and it filmed manatee underwater really, really outstanding. And as long as you got the strap instead of the magnetic mount, the magnetic mount scares me underwater. So I just want to use the strap mount. Now I'm in the hat mount. Now the one thing you got to do when you, when you have a hat mounted camera, when you turn your head, you got to do it slow. If I do it like this, it's a blur. 
It looks like the hat mount is a lot better than the chest mount for walking. I'm watching it right now, and it's pretty, pretty cool. All right, now we have wrapped up our walk, guys, and we are gonna head into downtown diner. It's really a great place to get breakfast. Made a lot of friends in here, and we're gonna come back and visit and get some good breakfast. They got a great cook back there. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll talk to you once we get seated and all that kind of stuff, so. We'll be back in a bit, I'll take the bar. What's up, dog? <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, how are you? Out doing it again. Here we go. Hi, I don't need that. I've been here once or twice. <laughs> doing a new product today, bro. Well, guys, I am in my favorite diner here while I'm in celebration and going to get us some breakfast and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, uh, I love this place. So anyway. All right, one accessory you're definitely going to need is this magnetic mount right here because you get the one with the ball joint on it and this camera, as you can see, has no quarter 20 on the bottom. Now, you can either buy a metal cage or this gadget, and it's just like the one with the ball joint. It has the fold-out ears, as you can see here, and it also has the quarter 20 right there. And it just clips in just like the other one does. Got to get the logo pointed the right way. And just like that, it's on, and it's on securely. I did test that, and it is not going anywhere. So this is definitely a must-have accessory. guys hey this is day three of testing out the insta 360 go uh, 3s and i'm out with my sister today we're out on the e-bikes and i've got this mounted in my normal action camera spot on the e-bike and just doing some riding around we got storms coming in over the next week so we're going to get this ride in early before it hits right now it is a beautiful day warm but as long as we're moving we have natural air conditioning so anyway, we're out doing our thing, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Hi guys, uh, we are, I'm using the wireless microphone. I have the Go 3S uh, out of its box and onto my, on the dependent on my shirt, kind of seeing what I see. Anyway, uh, what I'm doing guys is uh, kind of just checking out the, uh, the chest mount using the pendant but I like it uh, let me shut that thing down and you can see what I'm seeing as we ride down the trail coming up on sister right up here and it's kind of cool but we're just doing our thing uh, continuing our testing and today is the e-bike testing and uh, seems to be doing really good Well guys, hey, we're coming up to the end of our 20 mile ride uh, and testing of the Insta360 uh, Go 3S. And so far I'm pretty pleased with it. We're gonna continue our review later on this week. Uh, we're gonna do some water stuff and stuff like that. 
but we're going to wrap it up out here on the e-bike test and it passed without a uh, question it passed with flying colors so hey we'll see you guys later all right guys ah this is the last day of the review of the insta 360 3s camera now what i'm going to do today is kind of an unfair advantage but also a kind of a cool idea i'm putting this bad boy right next to the gopro 11. i'm not going to buy the gopro 12 because they didn't make enough changes in the 12 to make it worth its while what i'm doing is i mounted two cameras on the mount that you know one of those two camera mounts and i went ahead and put the gopro 11 and my insta 360 um, go 3s right next to it and i want to check out the um clarity of photos you know everybody says gopro is is the king and all this kind of stuff well personally i disagree i think the king action camera out there today is the insta 360 ace pro but before i go any further the next thing I want to do, guys, is I want to talk to you about the Insta360 Customer Service Group. Now, those of you who follow my channel know that I did a review on the Insta360 Flow Pro and it failed. And it failed because I couldn't keep the tracking locking on me. And uh, when I did go behind a tree or a bush or something like that, it would lose me. And it was extremely frustrating. And then I found out if you wanted to use gesture control using rear lenses, not your uh, front lens on your phone, but the rear lenses, you could not activate face tracking and gesture control at the same time. If you went into tracking, it would shut off gesture control. If you turn on gesture control, it would shut off face tracking, which doesn't make any sense. So anyway, uh, I got frustrated with it. I didn't do a great review on it, I kind of gave it three because it does have a lot of great features, but it wouldn't work for what I wanted it to do. So I sent it back, I returned it. Well, anyway, uh, Insta360 reached out to me and asked what they could do to make this thing right. Well, there's not much you can do if it doesn't work. So the guy was Eddie. Uh, I worked with him now for a couple of weeks, uh, going back and forth and it's been a very very positive experience i told him i had three videos on youtube that he could give to his tech support team and actually watch the footage fail like it did with me as far as the tracking and all that kind of stuff went and and that's basically what they did and he contacted me and he said okay dale we can't go through amazon because it wipes out any links can you give me your regular email? I said, sure, no problem. And then I sent them, oops, I sent him the three YouTube links from my channel showing the Flow Pro problems that I had. And it was all real. It, and it was my first learn together video. You know, that's what, what this one is. This is a learn together video. And he said he needed time uh, for them to review the videos and see if they could determine what was wrong. Well, they did. They did determine. He got back with me a few days later. And he says, Dale, he says, uh, we found out that it's in the program. There's something wrong within their programming for that particular unit. And they're going to be producing a firmware update that should correct that problem. And that was really cool. And uh, then, uh, then he asked me if there was anything else I could do for him because I didn't want the unit. Uh, I found out with my lifestyle, with the kayaking and e-biking, a phone gimbal just doesn't make sense in what I do. So basically, uh, I didn't want it again. So he asked me if there was anything they could do for me to kind of take care of the inconveniences and they offered me a discount not crazy, but a good discount. And I used it to apply to this camera. The one I'm talking about today, the, the, uh, the 3S. 
and I applied it to it. Everything worked good. Uh, they did a, I mean, their customer service, and especially Eddie, uh, Eddie, hats off to you, bro. I mean, you did a really, really great job of making sure that your customer was satisfied and, and or take care of things to make it right. And uh, I gotta thank you for all the communications you did. I'm glad you were able to use those videos to find the problem in the Pro, uh, Flow Pro. So I'm real happy about that. I right, here we go again, guys. Uh, we're up at our regular park and uh, I'm getting all kinds of cameras set up and shooting here. I'm shooting with three of them right now. But anyway, to continue uh, with the review of the S3, or the recap, actually, it's not continue with the review. It's the recap of the S3. I found it, I was worried about image stabilization, horizon lock. Well, all of that is done in post-production through the studio. It's automatic, and it does its thing and uh, that makes the footage really stay level. Now you can set up, now one of the things I found out is it has some corrective sliders in, you, in the studio itself to where if it's a little bit oblong like this or like that, you can adjust that and it'll adapt it. And flow state is, will kick in. Uh, horizon lock is while you're into that clip and then flow state kicks in when you cue or export it. That's when flow state kicked in. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And I was looking at the footage yesterday and it was, it was really pristine. I am extremely happy with it. Um, as far as the size of the camera and the powerhouse that it puts out, it puts out 4K. Now, one of the things I had a little bit of issue with, for some reason, I would set it to 4K and then it would go back to 2.7K. I don't know why it did that, but uh, apparently it's not doing it anymore. So I must have did something wrong. I don't know what it is, but I did something. And that's what I, I find out when I'm learning a new camera. I make all kinds of mistakes and then try to share those mistakes with you so you don't make the same mistakes I did. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're going to continue our ride, guys, and we're going to probably go up and get a cup of coffee where we'll finish this video up because I really don't have any, any complaints except for not having a quarter 20 on the bottom of the camera and or a magnetic mount, which I had to buy separately, uh, that has the little folding ears and the quarter 20 in the center because the one that's got the, the ball joint on it, it just doesn't make any sense. I want it to be, uh, now the ball joint's cool. If you're, <laughs> the ball joint is cool and works really great if you're gonna be changing things around, but if you're gonna be uh, static, as far as the mount goes, then this particular mount system that I talked about earlier in the video uh, should be in the kit, but it's not. Uh, so I did have to buy it. Uh, I haven't done the, the water test, so I'll be cutting in the water test right here. Hi guys, I, uh, we're gonna wrap up this edition of On the Patio with Mr. D. We are out here at Starbucks right now doing our ride, but I wanted to recap. Uh, I mean, I really don't have anything bad to say about this specific camera, except that it doesn't have a quarter 20 on the bottom and you, you should have that, um, what do they call that? down eared quarter 20 steel magnetic mount in the kit when you buy it. You shouldn't have to rely on the one that has the ball mount on it. Because there are a lot of times I just want to sit flat and I don't want to raise it up on that ball mount. Now the next thing I found out was is that little plunger sticky thingy that the ball mount screws into, 
that's an absolutely waste. I used it out at Lake Apomka Wildlife Drive, and I stuck it onto my computer screen in my truck, and it worked great. I mean, it had the camera up there, and I was doing my thing, doing, 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 and then I popped it off. And then later that same day, I tried to put it on, and it just kept falling off. So I went home, ran it through the water like they say you're supposed to do with this thing, and I did that, and I just can't get it to hold now. So. I won't be using that. I'll be using my uh, pressure sucker ones and that's why I need this two leg and quarter 20 magnetic mount for the bottom of the camera so I can hook it onto my suction cup mounts and know that it's gonna hold. Especially if I'm trying to do it outside and I'm driving. I definitely wouldn't wanna use that when it comes with a kit. So that's, that's the only bad thing. Uh, I think if they just replaced the magnetic mount with the Stengel uh, two ear drop down quarter 20 center magnetic metal mount in the kit. And then if you wanted to get that other one, that's fine or put it with it. That would be my suggestion because you're paying a pretty penny for this. Now this is the 128 gig. So you're looking at $429 for this camera. And there's a lot of cameras out there like GoPro that you can get for $299 all day long. And that's the GoPro 12 because the 13 is coming out. So it's got to have something special about it. Now, the one thing I found out special about it is the smallness of the camera and I the magnetic pendant that I put on my chest or the cap mount, which I have right here. And uh, also like the idea of the uh, hold button in the charging case that holds the camera in place and you want to take the camera out of that mount, you have to press that little button. So that's really cool. So anyway, uh, that about covers it. Again, I want to thank Eddie personally uh, from Insta360 uh, Customer Support Division, or, but I want to thank him personally for everything that he did to make me a satisfied customer. And it's really not hard because I own a lot of Insta360 gear. Uh, I have now the Go 3S. I had the Go 2. I just sold that the other day. Uh, I have the Insta360 X3. Uh, I also have the Insta360 One RS Twin. And I think the, and the Ace Pro. Now, the Ace Pro has got to be the best, without a question, the best action climber on the market today. So anyway, guys, hey, thanks for watching. I know this was a long video, but we'll get back with you later on.